parents of reddit what's your best example of reversed psychology on your kids that actually worked when i was a kid i refused to get up in the morning my mom said we were going to trick my dad into thinking i was still asleep so she made me put on clothes and then hide under the covers and pretend to be asleep then my dad would come in to wake me up and I would fool him because I was already dressed and ready. This worked on me for years and I never questioned it. In hindsight it's pretty obvious that my parents just wanted me to get dressed without a fuss. Don't know if this counts. But. At my high school. Private. Boys only. In the 1960s. They made a big deal about how long your hair was. And would occasionally order a boy to go home and get a haircut. I thought it was stupid. Until years later. A master confided to me at a reunion that the policy was deliberate. The school figured we'd spend so much energy rebelling about hair length. That we would ignore other aspects of teenage rebellion. Not? Comma surprisingly. They were mostly right. I taught my kids when they were toddlers that no amount of yelling. Shaking or hitting can wake a sleeping adult. The only thing that works is a gentle hug and or a nice kiss on the cheek. Edit. Probably needed some more details for the reverse psychology aspect to be clear. It went something like this step 1. Tell the kids I'm going to sleep and nothing they do will wake me. Head buried face down is the safest position. Step 2. After the initial onslaught dies down pretend to awaken on your own. Tell them you got a bit of nap left in you and nothing can wake you. Especially not hugs and kisses. I don't know if it was truly reverse psychology. Or an exhausted response out of desperation. We were in Lj near the grocery store checking out. Kid was 3. And the meltdown started. And quickly became an on the floor tantrum. I looked down and said. Louder than normal. But not yelling. Where is your mother? We need to find your mom. Double quote. She was startled. Because I am her mom. And confused. But the tantrum ended quickly. And with hugs. I bet you can't. Double quote. Both of them hate the assertion that they are not capable of doing something. Can you put your toys away? Will almost certainly garner a hard no. But I bet you can't put all those toys back in the box. No way you'll be able to will have them whizzing round tidying like demons. Followed by a very indignant C. I told you I could. Dot. Q fake surprise from me. They're only 4 and 7. So I know this has got limited time. But so far works like a charm every time. Wanted to name my boat. Anything I would think of was dismissed as stupid by my 13 year old son. After deciding on a name. I confided to a male friend my son liked. Made my friend suggest the name as though it was his idea. My son thought the name was perfect. Done. I don't so much know if you would call it reverse psychology. But I didn't realize it until my dad told me this. When there were chores that needed doing. He noticed if he asked me to mow the lawn. I would complain and procrastinate. But if he asked would I rather mow the lawn or wash the windows. I'd pick one and just get it done. Shattered my brain when he told me when I was in my 20s. I use it when I'm coaching or babysitting all the time and it almost never fails. Took my 3 year old son to one of those doctor's visits where he was going to get a shot. He was worried about the shot on the whole drive over. Almost to the point of tears. We get to the doctor's office and a nurse subtly lets me know that my son is not just scheduled for one shot. But five of them in the same visit. I turn to my son with an exaggerated smile and tell him. Good news. They figured out how to take that one big shot you were going to get and instead break it up into these five little tiny shots so it won't hurt nearly as much. Double quote. You could see the relief wash over his face. He stopped squirming and relaxed completely. He took the first shot and even smiled and said it's true. The small ones don't hurt. Double quote. We actually made it through the third shot before the effect wore off and reality kicked in. Still. I counted it as a victory. One of my best friends through childhood used to be punished with no salad if she misbehaved. She cherishes salad now and would always try to eat as much as possible during school lunch. Coincidentally. Her now husband used to be punished with no books. 
It had the same effect. I think it's hilarious that they'd be hitting the salad bar and library like some black market their narc parents couldn't reach her ha ha. My dad once made the mistake of telling me that his parents never balked at his college expenses if he was spending his money on books. Well. I adore reading I always have and you better believe I spent way more money at Barnes and Noble than your average 18-22 year old. And not just on coffee or junk all books. All the time. I'm 35 and still lugging them around. Not reverse psychology exactly. But when my first son was about 4 he would often burst into our bedroom way too early in the morning. Full of energy. It was up to me to either get up and engage with him or send him off on some mission so as to grab a few more precious minutes of shut eye. One I'm proud of was telling him to find out which of his legs could run the fastest. He was charging around the corridor for ages doing a kind of manic goose step before he came back in panting that they were both the same. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Glad to have so many parents willing to try this madness with their own kids. My mum had a friend that would put vegetables on her own plate and not the kids. When the kids asked she would be reluctant to share. That's grown up food. But I suppose I can let you have a little. Double quote. Her kids grew up loving vegetables. I sat at the dinner table for 3 hours staring at the yucky cauliflower I refused to eat. This reminds me of an instance when my child convinced my wife and myself to change our plans for dinner. We were in a grocery store to pick up something quick and easy to eat that we wouldn't have to prepare. Our daughter. Wanted none of that. She demanded that she wanted a salad from the salad bar. We started to argue back. But then realized. Our child demands that we feed her vegetables for dinner instead of a microwave meal. Why are we saying no? We had salad for dinner that night. I'm still waiting on the result of this but a while ago I pulled a Calvin's mom. I didn't want my kid brother influenced by our dad's return to smoking, and my mom just made it so taboo to talk about, they're divorced. So once. When we were home alone. I gave him a cigarette and told him to breathe in so that he could feel it in his lungs. This poor child took this huge rag off this cig and coughed up a storm. He said he hated it and didn't know why dad would ever smoke. I also wanted him to try one of those tiny bottles of absolute but he just grimaced as he told me his friend stole some vodka from her parents and they gagged trying to even sip it. So I guess that resolved itself. We had motion detectors for the alarm in our house when I was growing up. Over the course of the year. Every single time I would get in trouble my parents would point at the motion detector and say. You better watch yourself. Santa is watching you. What really drove that point home was that the detector would turn red whenever you would walk in front of it. Making me believe that Santa was actually watching me. Worked like a charm. I taught my kid reverse psychology. He kept complaining that his younger brother kept trying to take the toy he was playing with. I told him to find a toy he didn't want to play with and pretend to be really interested in it. Then. When his brother wanted it. Reluctantly give it up then play with the toy he really wanted. Five years later. Still works. Just now it's with tablets and boxes. When my daughter was in the 4th or 5th grade her best friend was over and saw one of my thongs on the floor and said I can't wait to get older so I can wear thongs all the time. My actual horror and I ask why. She says because they're sexy. I'm pretty sarcastic and quick witted in general so. I didn't miss a beat when I told her that thongs were invented because once you hit puberty your butt crack gets really sweaty. So it's actually showing other grown up guys that you're one of the chicks with swamp ass. My kid's now in the 8th grade and still brings this up when thongs are brought up in conversation. But mostly so she can side eye glance and point at me mentioning that I have a ton. Kids are fun. From the time they were young I would joke when one of them did a chore or got a good grade. And that's why you're my favorite. It would create a happy competition and I did and still to this day enjoy the benefits. Daughter is a freshman in college and came home last weekend and said to her brother who is in 9th grade. I folded laundry and that's why I'm mom's favorite. I'm one proud mom. Most of all at the humor sarcasm skills I've passed on. Mom did that to us growing up. I'm 32 and me and my siblings still argue at who is mom's favorite. 
She loves hearing us argue about it and can still get us to do things for her such as doing her grocery shopping or doing her laundry when when we visit. More like a lie. But I convinced my son, for two summers anyways, that the little white truck that drove down our block every evening was the vegetable man. That was until the day the man decided to drive his truck in the opposite direction and display the pictures of all his vegetables. I heard of a family doctor whose teenage song painted his hair blue. Instead of commenting on it. He dyed his own hair blue too. His son found out in the evening. After he had worked a day like that. The son. Completely embarrassed. Said. You can't see patients like that. Can you? The doctor said. Why not? I figured it's the new trend because you're doing it. The next day they both dyed their hair to a normal color. And then there's me who asks my 6 year daughter if I can dye her hair crazy colors. She hasn't taken me up in the offer yet. I dyed my hair a few times in high school. Bleach blonde. I have short brown hair normally. Orange. Half green half blonde. Split down the middle. Comma. All green too I think. My parents were fine with it. And my dad would say it's not my hair. Do whatever you want. Double quote. Currently do this with my kids. If I give them veggies at dinner. It'll be the last thing on their plate to be eaten and 9 times out of 10 they'll be sit a fool to eat them. But plop them in front of the TV while I'm cooking supper with a snack of a big ass plate of veggies and they will eat them every time. It's win win win. They're out of my face when I'm cooking. They're eating all their veg. And if I call anything a snack. They're more prone to eating it without question. When we want her to try something new. One of us pretends to be scared to do it or try it. So she and the other parents try to convince us how it's perfectly fine. Or fun or how it'll be tasty. She is always so busy arguing for what's right about trying something. She almost never says no. So. She's been on roller coasters. Hiked along waterfalls. Had no fears about her first plane ride. Eats almost anything spicy things. Fancy cheeses. Olives. All vegetables. And when she does say no. We absolutely respect it as a limit for her. Of course. So only I eat fish and shellfish. Sadly. My daughter was struggling with some math homework in second grade. I was trying to help her but she was just getting frustrated and giving up without even trying. So I took her worksheet and said. Let me see if I can figure this out. I looked at it for a few seconds. Started to make some marks on the paper. Then erased them. Looked at the paper again and then acted like I was frustrated too. But then I decided to one up her frustration by putting my head down. Fake crying. Fake tears. The whole nine yards. It was a performance for the ages. My daughter, being incredibly empathic, immediately said it's okay daddy. You're not stupid. I'll show you how to do it. I lifted my head up. Dried my tears and proceeded to let my daughter teach me how to do second grade math. Turns out she knew more than she was letting on. But was either just tired or being lazy. Math is now one of her strongest subjects and she actually enjoys doing it. When I was a toddler, I had cancer and had to spend a lot of time in a children's hospital. My floor was basically one big circle of windowed rooms on the outside with a big nurse's station in the middle so they could keep an eye on everything. Getting up and walking was very important to my recovery. So my parents would encourage me to take a lap with them around the nurse's station. I was usually tired, and also an uncooperative toddler. So I was less than enthusiastic about it. My parents would get me to walk with them about 3 stroke fourths of the way around the nurse's station. Then ask if I wanted to turn around and go back to my room. Being a dumb kid. I always thankfully agreed. And that's how my parents used reverse psychology to get me to do one and a half laps instead of just one. Not a parent. But my little sister hates putting her toys in their box after playing. So yesterday instead of telling her to do so. I went into her room. Started putting the toys away. And told her I was winning because I was putting the toys in the box faster than she was. She ended up putting all of her toys in the box in about 3 minutes. She did call me a loser at the end. 
but I think it was worth it. Here's a great one I learned a few years ago that is like magic. Your kid will hit an age where they will have unconsolable meltdowns where their brains just cease to function and they can't be comforted or calmed. Just ask do you want to play a game? And they'll go yes through the snot bubbles. Then look around the room and ask them to find three blue things. They'll find them. Then two orange things. Etc. They will calm down so quickly. Sometimes I skip the game request and just ask my son to find the objects. This is actually a tactic used by adults during panic attacks. Something about naming or counting objects and colors. One red sign. Two black birds. Three purple flowers triggers another part of the brain that can rationalize or something and helps to calm you down when you can't. I've used it myself. There's an article with science and stuff explaining this if you want to read more. Child here. But still a great example. Once when my parents were having a party. I got a bad case of hiccups. After a while my dad whipped out his wallet and pulled out a $100 bill. I was probably 12 so that was a fortune to me. He said if I hiccuped again I could have the money. Standing there. A ton of adult eyes watching to see if I do it. And not a single hiccup came out. I was cured and pissed. For all my childhood. Mashed potatoes with carrots were called surprise potatoes. When I was about 18. My brother my older sister and I asked my parents why the FCK they were called surprise potatoes. My parents told us that my older sister just didn't like mashed potatoes with carrots when she was 3-4 years old. So one day. They did the same mashed potatoes with carrots but called them surprise potatoes. My sister just ate them up like it was the best thing in the world. So the name stuck. I pulled a version of Tom Sawyer painting the fence and tricking his friends into doing it for him. I wouldn't let my kids, 3 and 5, pick up the dog poop in our yard because it was too fun for me and I still pretend to be reluctant to let them do it. To where they're begging and I'm like. Okay okay just this one time. Next time I get to do it. I think I can ride it out for another 2 or 3 years if I keep my older son quiet so his sister can take over when he catches on. My younger brother had a general lack of confidence and had stammering problems when facing an order since when he was in middle school. His earliest participation saw no success and he became further embroiled in self-loathing and general listlessness. I started to convince him to participate in more and more debates by telling him that whenever he'll face a defeat. We'll go somewhere and have a nice eat out or do something fun. Thinking probably that he wasn't perhaps very good at it. He started trying his hand at every single debate thereafter. Every time he lost. We used engage in some fun activity to his liking. And that just gave him the initial push into further involvement in the debating scene of his school. Eventually. He got good at it and started winning competitions after competitions. He's in his final year of schooling. Is the best speaker of his school. Has won several awards as testimony. Has won slam poetry competitions. And even secured an international medal in an English Olympiad. We do fun activities now. Too. But to celebrate his victories of course. Yay. Best I saw was when the kid would never bother to take out the trash. The dad said. It was fine and he'd do it. And that he was sorry for thinking the kid was mature enough to be responsible for anything. Really made him feel like a baby. And a week later he started taking the trash out without being asked. I wanted to get my kids to do chores for the appreciation of hard earned money. The weekly allowance was $5 which didn't motivate anyone to try hard on their chores. I now give them $20 a week. But they have to pay $5 in rent. $5 for internet. And $5 for food. So now that they get to hold it and spend it they bust ass doing chores for their huge $20 allowance. Stupid kids. All three of my kids were allowed one stir fry ingredient that they didn't have to eat more than three pieces of. One chose pineapple. One chose tomato. And one chose carrot. They were allowed to chose a different ingredient for next time. But never before the meal. They would eat their three pieces. And I'd eat the rest if they found more in the meal. Worked perfectly. Everyone felt empowered. 
It wasn't until they were all grown up and had left home that I told them that whatever else I used in the stir fry. Those three items were guaranteed. They now eat everything.